Franklin County Commissioners meeting from August 21st, 2018. Good morning. Welcome to the regular weekly meeting of the Franklin County Board of Commissioners. Today is Tuesday, August 21st, 2018. All three commissioners are here today. Commissioner Miller, Commissioner Cook, and myself, Commissioner Peck, along with County Administrator Mr. Johnson. And we've had some feedback that we're not talking into these mics enough, so I'm going to move it up some. Uh, let's see. We'll uh, officially call the meeting to order at this time. The first item of business is the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. If you join me, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Next item is the approval of minutes from August 14, 2018. We can pass by consensus, or if any commissioner wishes to make a motion to approve, they can certainly do so. Just approve for Commissioner Chairman's signature. Okay. So, uh, sounds like we have board consensus for approval. Mm -hmm. or, I'm sorry, was that a motion? I didn't... No. Okay, good. All right, so they can stand approved without any uh, changes, no comments from the board. Next item is uh, a request to uh, sell tax title property. I know I saw our treasurer in the hall, but you're going to be presenting today, okay? Yes, there's one way to go check on the answer early. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Material looks, looks pretty good, and I know all the commissioners have read all of that. Is there anything in this packet that wasn't in the read ahead that we should focus on? Um, so, in your packet that we included, there's the judgment and then the recording, uh, and then along is the map that shows the information of the property. So, I don't think I included the judgment. And also the recording of the property, but I included that in this packet. Yeah. Uh, the judgment would have been how the county came to take possession of it. Yes, um, yes, that's correct. So when it gets was that about in 1997. So we've had it for a long time. Any questions from the board members? No questions for me. Uh, I'd say that Rita really had covered it yeah, very well. Yeah. Um, Maybe if you wouldn't mind just kind of refreshing my memory, the process going forward, assuming that the board agrees that yes, we should go ahead and sell this, what are the steps and what's the timeline? Um, so we will have to advertise and let the public know that this property will be up for auction again. Okay. And so we can either decide if we want to um, sell this property before the auction in December, and or we can just put it all together with the upcoming foreclosure property, which our auction is held in December. So we can kind of talk about that and see what steps we want to take moving forward. So um, that's a, a routine practice is to do it in December. I think I recall that in the previous meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and Am I correct that if we were to sell it separately now that there would be additional costs to the county as opposed to doing it in December with other properties? No. Well, additional costs that the, the taxpayer would usually... Well, if we sold this one separately now, I think we'd have to advertise right. that's a cost. Mm -hmm. We'd yes. have staff work, that's a cost. Mm -hmm. If we did it in December together with the annual sale of properties, it would get lumped in yes. and we would potentially avoid some costs. That's correct. Correct. Okay. Um, anybody feel free to jump in any time. I think I've only got one other question, which is looking at the numbers in the read ahead and if memory serves, it said that uh, the assessed value was 4800 and the price per thousand on taxes is about 12 $12.7, something like that. If I did the math on that, multiply that out, I think it comes out to about $58, $59 a year in taxes, but the package said 250 a year. Um, 
So what, was that based on all the other taxing districts included? Or? That was based on a wrong assessed value. So oh, okay. um, what had happened was the assessors, um, I just had gotten the wrong information. So then we, I went downstairs and talked to Steve, and sure. he had reassessed us at 4800 And then that includes also, like, mosquito and weed. So it comes out to actually 150, roughly. So the, between 100 to 150. So the 4,800 assessment was actually was correct. Mm -hmm. the, the levy rate was incorrect because it didn't include the other assessments for mosquito and stuff. Is that? No. Yeah. So when they we looked at it at initially, mm -hmm. it was assessed at 16,000. Oh, okay. All right. All right. And the property around it was much less. Okay. So we talked to Seed about it, and that property was reassessed. Huh. That's interesting. Any any idea whether or not it has devalued over the years, or whether it's just never accurate? Never accurate. They normally don't really pay attention to tax title property. It's one of their like not as important as other like use property. Right. So. So if it's worth uh, 4800 and you're going to get uh, 100 a year in taxes, by putting on the tax rolls, it will be at least five years before we even break even. It kind of seems to me that maybe the, the minimum price ought to be a little higher. Um, so is that part of the analysis that you think we, the board, should do is to and consider setting a higher minimum so that the payback to the taxpayers doesn't take five years just to break even. I realize we're not getting anything off of it now, uh, except you could argue that the land value is going up. That if we sell it five years from now, it's probably worth considerably more. So, what, what's your thought on that? I realize it's an opinion, but right. You're so. The so as, as for my office trying to take care of all the tax title properties, my first initial is to get everything back on to, um, on the tax roll. Right. And if we wait for five years, this person might not be interested in it. Um, they might not be interested at it at a higher price right now. Um, my opinion is if you offer it to them at a higher price, if they say no, you could always go back. I don't know. Okay. So so one of our options then would be to uh, agree to sell the property but set a different initial minimum price? Mm. Okay. I, I just, we've done a number of these over the years and um, I, don't, I don't have any special knowledge of this property or, or anyone involved. We're just looking at it, doing the math, that's why I calculated the, <clears throat> what the return was. And, and just. Uh, there's value in getting it back on the tax roll if the citizens of Franklin County are actually going to accrue some taxes and, and a, a five, six year payback. Um, it seems like a long time. So I guess I'm not opposed to selling it, but I'd be inclined to think that they on something with a you know, assessed value of at least 5000 probably got to be starting somewhere more around 2000 or 50% of assessed value as opposed to what could almost be described as, as giveaway minimums. And again, it doesn't, doesn't benefit anybody sitting up here. It's, it's looking out for the financial interests of the people from so, down to the owners. So I, I can agree with raising that minimum a little bit because somebody's getting a pretty good deal here. But of course, if you look at this map and it's landlocked, there's only two people that really should be interested in that. Mm -hmm. This is easement for a street or a road, mm -hmm. and therefore it's not landlocked. No, I, I guess I don't mean that. Interest. Maybe landlocked isn't the word. I mean, that's an easement. But let's just go back to the interest of who would want that 0.21 uh, of an acre. You know, that's, a, that's smaller than most of these lots out here at point thirty-three. So it's a pretty small piece. So there's only two people I could see is the uh, Burnett's and, and this guy that would be interested in that point twenty-one. Well, I don't know who owns this this long vertical piece here that looks like it's a, a road easement. It's not uh, wide enough for a road. It'd be a utility yeah. easement or something. Yeah. If you look over at Oregon Avenue, how the width of that is three times wider than what that little strip is there. Yeah, well, that's also a four-lane 
Road. Josie, do you know what that vertical parcel is? No, I don't. I don't know. It, nobody is on it. I believe it is just an easement. A, a utility easement because there's nobody that owns it on. Well, I, I, I'm probably wrong. I'm going to stick my neck out and say if it's an easement, it wouldn't be showing up as a parcel line. Okay, we'll look so, into that. So I yeah. think it's a parcel. Anyway, it, it, I don't think that stops us from moving forward today. I'm just, I'm just suggesting that our, our duty, if you will, is to get as much value for the people of the county who own this piece of ground as we can. And I don't think that starting at a minimum of uh, 2000 or half of the assessed value is, is unreasonable. Um, but that's just, you know, it's just one, one voice. So let me understand, this one is going on market September, not with December, not with the others? Or is it all going on December? It depends. So okay. we have to have enough time to get the, for the advertising. Um, it varies. If we have enough time to, for advertising, we could get it on sooner, or we could just throw it on with the other foreclosure properties in December. So do we do one every quarter or just in? Just annually. So there isn't one in September. No. no. Do it's just a December one, unless yeah. we do it separate. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, and that's kind of what I'm getting to. Yeah. Dealing with such small numbers here, the, yeah, the cost exactly. of advertising and everything, you know, I'm kind of well, think it's December. I would agree. I also would agree that uh, a minimum would be nice um, because that's a, you know, I don't see an advantage to anybody else, but I do see an advantage to these two owners here. And, um, but are they getting the, you know, getting the, if he adds, I think it's a minimal uh, cost. I would like to see the uh, minimum update a little bit because these guys, if they want it, they can't pay it, I would suspect. Okay. I just simply look at it, if it was my piece of ground, what would I do? Right. That, that's really the standard I think we're supposed to apply with the, with the public's money is well, what would you do if it was your own money? And so I would think that um, 2000 as a minimum and sell in December would be my preference. Yep. What's, what's the right. preference of the board? You no, know, I can't agree. I would rather take what's bid and get it off the rolls and get it on the, get it on the tax rolls instead of this guy backing out and saying, you know, the heck with him. And, and I might do that, and then he might just come, you know, back. Then we have to give it to you know what are we going to do with it? Sit in the tax roll or give it back to them for a thousand? Yeah. So I do understand that also, but uh, I just don't want to be cheap in ourselves. That's something we could get more for if uh, yeah. you know. It would, it would make for an easy sale just to do it as mm -hmm. set up. But mm -hmm. um, my goal is not an easy sale. My goal is to get as much value for the people of Franklin County who own it. And if it doesn't sell, we could wait two years, two and a half years, sell it for a thousand and still break even with what's proposed in front of us now. So the bid was somebody came to you and said we will give you a thousand dollars for this. That's the no, that's the minimum opening bid for the office. And who did that? You did you guys that's the applicant. The okay. applicant did. Okay, yeah. that's what okay. So but again if you if you left it like it is and waited two and a half years mm -hmm. and then moved it forward exactly like it is today, yeah. you wouldn't lose anything. Hundred bucks or something. Not, not even that. If, if, Fifty-seven dollars. The thought. return on investment at 100 to 150 a year uh, of tax revenue. By the time you pay for the advertising costs, it's probably going to take five years just to get enough tax revenue to get it back to the assessed value to recover the value that the people of Franklin County currently own. So, I, yeah, it's not a, not a big deal, but yeah. I think going forward, historically, we have put these out there at uh, exceptionally low uh, openings, and that tends to move them quickly. Mm -hmm. But I keep going back to what's your standard. Mine is, what would I do if it was my money, and what's my duty to the people of Franklin County? And the answer is, get it back on the tax rolls, but don't give it away because it's not mine to give away. So that, that's where I'm coming from. If the board wants to be different, maybe then that's fine. But I think sell it in December, 2000 minimum. That's, that's where I'm at. Okay. So if it doesn't sell, then we just come back in a year or two and do the same thing. We are not out much in that 
tax loss. Yeah, it doesn't sell. Like you can two and a half years and put it out of the thousand, and it's still come out about the same place. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I look at it and I say, this is, if it was my ground, my land, mm -hmm. and it's a nuisance, I just want to get rid of it to whoever put a bid on it, though. Sure. And that looks like this could be a, a case. Uh, so if you're thinking of it being your land, uh, you might want to just unload it. And that's what I think the, the treasurer is talking about doing. So I, I can see both sides. Um, I don't have a problem with the small expense. We're gonna, what, what small expense? What we're going to lose in a year or two to, to go ahead and do the minimum 2000 this guy may come in and buy it. Somebody may. So I don't have a problem with that either. So I would, I would, I suggest we go ahead and do that also. Okay. 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 So that's good. There you go. Good discussion. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. I give you these back. Oh yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda this morning is a request for road name change of Richview Drive to Bear Drive. This is an item that the board saw previously. We actually took an action to change the name, and then it was discovered uh, through the input of, of a citizen. And we always appreciate citizen input, but we discovered that we had not uh, gone through the appropriate process of notifications of people that might be affected, and so. Last week, we rescinded that resolution, which takes us back to square one. Uh, Greg, thanks for uh, uh, your work and, and to Matt for owning the fact that it was uh, public works that had a little glitch with the process. Everybody makes mistakes, and I just respect the heck out of the fact you guys would own it and say, let's regroup and get it right. So let's start over. Okay. Okay. Well, as you know, you received a letter from uh, Kirk and Debbie Bear requesting the name change from Ridgeview to Blair. And as you happily <coughs> summarize the process, you know, we, we brought it to you. I made a recommendation to accept it. It was pointed out that we didn't have uh, proper input from the other landowners. Um, and then we came back to rescind that uh, resolution. And now we're here to, uh, to bring it back to you in, in that time we did send out letters to contact the other landowners and we received two back both of them which were opposed to the name change okay so I've got two or three comments but I'm going to defer to the board and make sure that okay. they're safe. did we ever get the exact number of people it would affect I think it was eight. Eight. And that's, is that eight parcels, eight owners? Eight it was eight, 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 eight addresses, so I would assume that it's eight. Eight addresses, so if you've got five people living in one address, then you can see how. Right. Because the question was number of people affected, not number of addresses. Right. Mm -hmm. That I, I, I don't have a, a figure on. All right. No, not yet. Please. Well, okay. So, of, of those eight addresses, Hang on for a oh, I'm sorry. Are you able to hear me? We have other people in this room for meetings. I don't know if they come in and, and mess with things. All I did was switch mine off and back on. Now it seems to be working. But okay. So, um, sorry, Commissioner Miller's question was how many people are affected. And if you could just tell us how many properties or how many people living out there, or any way you want to phrase it. But yeah. So we have. Eight addresses to eight different parcels okay. would be affected. Uh, I believe three of them um, are uh, members of the Bear family. So three parcels. Three of three of the addresses. Yeah, three okay. of the parcels. Mm -hmm. So. 
question never really occurred to me, I guess, until before now. <clears throat> if, you're, if you've got three parcels on a road like that, does each parcel get an address or does each residence get an address? I thought that we only address residences, not parcels. Yeah, well, that it would depend on how things are laid out. I mean, generally speaking, there's usually one residence per parcel unless it's farmland, which sometimes there's. Right, which is kind of the case we're talking about here. So we've got three <clears throat> three parcels. Do we know how many residences? And I know they have the answer, and we'll, we'll come back. To <laughs> yeah, like I said, I, right now we have eight addresses. So I, I assume there's eight residences yeah. spread out. I don't know how many, uh, over how many parcels. So the reason I'm going down on this is because two of the issues that have been raised are um, mail service and emergency response. And so if you've got eight residences versus eight parcels, that's a very different thing when it comes to right. emergency response. Right. So we've got eight parcels out there. I'm just right. guess. Eight, eight residents. We have eight addresses, so we have eight residents. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't make that clear. On, well, on you probably did. I just didn't understand. <laughs> but, Mr. Miller, do you have more questions? Uh, no, I think I think that's uh, that's it. Commissioner Cook, did you have anything to weigh in on? For no, it's just that you know, after what we went through a couple of weeks ago and, and not having the uh, notifications to everybody, I don't think we would have had to get this far. Uh, uh, there's other landowners out there that have been there as long and, and have as much property and uh, have as much right to their family name. So, um, you know, I, I don't know that I care to uh, reverse this again. Okay, well, <clears throat> the current state of affairs is that there's... Uh, there's no change. To the no change. Right. Currently, the road is still named Bridgeview. We're back to square one. Yeah, based on the actions of last week. Right. So, from from what I understand uh, from Matt, and Matt, feel free to weigh in if I say anything that's different than, than what you've shared. Um, that we have no record of any issues or problems with emergency response being able to locate that road under its current name, and that. Um, the evidence of some uh, misdelivered mail uh, was one of the things identified by the Bear family. Uh, I think Matt, as I mentioned to you the other day, I live on Road 34 in Pasco, which you'd think would be a pretty easy address, yet I still get my neighbor's mail occasionally. Um, i trying to think of all the variables that play into this. We had a constituent at a previous meeting who uh, highlighted that <clears throat> changing uh, the road name would put costs on other property owners and even though they may not have a residence there, they do have businesses attached to those parcels and so there's um, a list of addresses that potentially, I'm not saying they would, potentially might have to be changed, credit card accounts, letterhead, exactly. where you get your mail, those kinds of things. So as I roll it all up, a name change would have impacts on, well, all, all eight of the residences. Uh, the applicants certainly, uh, I think, are, are happy to accept those impacts. They're the ones that are asking to change the name. But the others have indicated in writing that, that they're opposed and that those impacts are a problem for them. So is there anything that I've missed? I'm just trying to get all the information we have out on the table so that people know what we're using to make our decision. Right. I, I think you covered it pretty well as to what the, the impacts would be to the citizens, to the county. Of course, there would be some fiscal impact for changing the sign names, changing the road log. We have some, you know, uh, bureaucratic processes to go through on our side of it. The, the, the cost would be fairly minimal, I think, under $2,000, I think, of time and effort by our department. Uh, and that's the only... I've, those are the only things I can think of that would be the major impact. Okay. And of the two, the two letters that we got in opposition, um, they, uh, <coughs> excuse me, 
those are landowners out there. Any idea how many of those eight addresses they represent? No, I don't have that information. Any other comments from board members before I start holding to your position? I think Commissioner Cook is already clear on where he stands. Yes. So, so I don't have a comment. Um, so I don't know the history so much in all the roads. I can only recall Burns Road, but that's because it was a new road. Mm -hmm. We called it Burns. Fanny Road, I think, has been in there forever. All these names of the families kind of been a long time standing. Is that correct? Yeah, most of them. The road names I can't have been. think of anything to change them. Purpose. Yeah, we, we came to the board a little while ago with Fraser Drive to Fraser Road yeah, yeah. to clear up some things, but that's along, uh, you know, an established grid in an area that's yeah. developing out. Also, that's a continuous roadway in the future. And Correct. Eventually, it's going to be changed to the same anyway. Yeah. So, just a quick note on the Burns Road thing. Um, Matt, your predecessor, yes. to be clear, uh, decided that uh, he was in a position to go ahead and change that road name and made that decision and did it and posted signs before the board was ever consulted. Um, if the board wanted, we could certainly change that back to Powerline Road with two of the three people sitting up here saying do it. We haven't because it would be additional cost to the citizens, but it clearly violated the process. And I want to put that on the record so that um, uh, you know, if anybody wants to know the history. I don't want anybody using that as a precedent for mm -hmm. road name change and coming to us and saying, well, you did it for Burns, mm -hmm. so now you got to do it for this. Uh, you know, if it were me personally, I'd probably be inclined to say that the right thing to do is to change that back so that we're treating all of our constituents equitably and, and the same. But uh, that ship has probably sailed, and, and maybe it's in the best interest for everybody just not to go there. But I don't want that view as a precedent for road oh, And I know Matt's clear that these things mm -hmm. need to come to us because exactly the kind of issues we're talking about here. Exactly. Okay. And we are working on our internal processes, and I, I hope to come and back to the board you later this year. As well, so this year. <laughs> you didn't do it, Matt didn't do it. I'm just going to step up a sec. You know, when it comes to a road name change, the that really is a board decision. There's no doubt about that, and it did happen in the past. Uh, we are, at the request of the board, working on some internal policies by the county. As you can tell, this doesn't happen very often, and it should never be taken lightly when we do change the names of roads. Um, this process doesn't come up. We're not those requests or petitions. Anybody can petition the board for anything, as you all know. But this is certainly a process that caught us off guard and moving forward because we know that even our mistakes internally cause impacts to the, the landowners that are sitting here that made the request. And, but in short, these aren't decisions that should be taken lightly, and they're decisions that should be put in front of the board and will be put in front of the board from this point forward. And hopefully we'll be bringing the board some, uh, some uh, draft policies for the board to look at and provide input so that we come out with the very best policies moving forward on, on these types of actions by the board. So okay. that's one of All right. Thank Thanks, you. Matt. Appreciate you adding that to the record. So. Um, this is not a public hearing. There's not any requirement for public comments or testimony, but I'm sure there's some people that would like to share their thoughts. Anybody object to taking a few minutes to do that? Not at all. Okay. So if there's anybody that would like to speak, you feel free to come on up. There's no mic up here, so I guess I have to ask you to use the freestanding mic there. And again, this, this is not a, a quasi-judicial matter. It's not a uh, it's not a public hearing. It's just open comment. Right, right. Can you hear me? Sure. Okay. I'm Debbie Bear. This is my son, Kevin Bear. My husband is Kirk Bear, and he is harvesting potatoes right now. We farm. Um, we are one of the three landowners on that road. There are six houses on that road. We own three of the houses. We did not ask anyone in those houses to write any letters to you. I didn't even think of it. I guess maybe we should have. Um, and we knew the other ones would be negative because things have to be changed, addresses, names, all that. Um, so our home, we have three living in it. The next home has two. The next home can have anything from three to five. One of the homes is, um, I don't know how you call that, migrant housing. Mm -hmm. So I have a feeling there's a lot of people in that house. 
that might be where the home that had all the names came from. Um, as far as any issues with um, emergency response, that's why one of the reasons I'm here today. We, there are many roads out there that have river something in them. And like what I said in the letter, we get packages, we get mail, we get deliveries, we get people that even bring pizza out to the wrong address. And two weeks ago, we had an issue with our son. We had an emergency. So I had to call 911. And I know that Fire Station 2 came out because I saw the number 2 on their shirts. Three might have come out, I'm not sure. Six men came out. Station 2, I think, is on Clark, and I think it's probably all volunteer. Six men came out to help my son, who was in severe pain. We couldn't even move him ourselves to get him to the hospital. So that's why I called 911. Six guys came out. And none of them were able to help him whatsoever. None of them have medications. They said, we have to have a medic. So the medic was called out at the same time. I don't know if the medic came from Station 2. I don't even know if they have one. Or if he came from somewhere else. But he was called out at the same time. He ended up north of Pasco. I heard the medic, when he came back, say that he was at River Shore. I don't even know if there's a River Shore. Kevin heard River View. Anyway, he came a half an hour later. My son was in severe pain, and all these firefighters were standing around doing nothing. He finally got there, gave him a tranquilizer drug because he was in so much pain. <coughs> and um, anyway, they got him in a chair upstairs to the hospital to cut up. We got to Catholic, and um, within two days, he had surgery. He had a severely herniated disc. Everything happened quickly. It had to happen. If they would have sent us home, I would have had to get an ambulance again to take him back to the hospital again or to his physician. Um, these are the kind of things that, I mean, it was it's a perfect example. Here's my exhibit A. <laughs> um, why all these Riverview, Richview names, there's become so many. You know, when we, when his dad originally came to this area, he was an original farmer. He took the sagebrush, he was after World War II. You know, he did, yeah. He took the sagebrush out of the ground, it was six feet tall, he was an original. Um, he probably had a view of Richland. Now there's vineyard, now there's development going all around us. And many of the people want that name, River something, you know, and when the medic came, that's what he heard. He heard whatever. It was Ridgeview or I don't know what he heard, but it wasn't our name. And you know, if it was a life or death situation, it, it would have been too late. And um, we know that a lot of the home, a lot of the roads in that area were originally named after the original farmer. And I truly wish that my father-in-law <laughs> would have done this in the first place. Um, but now we do see a lot of development, a lot of road names. We think it's an excellent name, and it has the time to be changing this name. Um, you were saying that it would cost a couple thousand dollars to do this. We were, we were willing to pay that. If that's what the issue is, I know that people are going to need to change their bank accounts and change this and change that, and it's a pain in the butt. I mean, it's going to be a pain in the butt for us, personally, and for our business. But, um, I don't know, that, these are the reasons, these are some of them. I know there's more, I'm nervous, I can't think of anything. <laughs> I wish my husband were here, he'd probably do better than I would. Um, but anyway, before you consider what you're going to do, I hope you consider these reasons too, because other people on this road are going to have the same issue. When it comes to 911, when it comes to fires, when it comes to anything. So, thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, I don't see anyone else in the general public other than Michelle. Anything on this issue? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I was at 22. Michelle Andrews, 1421, 27. My husband is a retired paramedic firefighter. Um, 
these are some of the issues they have over in Kenwick as well. They have, I don't know, um, Yelm Place, Yelm Avenue, Yelm Lane, and then it's northeast, south, uh, southwest. And it's just, it's a mess. And um, we have a real heart for people out in those farmlands. Out in Hilo, they face the, the time is critical issue. And sometimes the community has to come around and recognize we do have to have some differences and it does cost us a little bit in the long run. Um, I would think that this would be a legitimate issue to address that those firefighters, they get sometimes 68 calls a day and that's a lot. And if just one misstep of Riverview, Ridgeview costs something like that, it really isn't worth it. And because now we've had a public hearing, I do think it's better to have a little more variation in the names. Just to be clear, we haven't had a public hearing, but right. I know you. I know you know that. <clears throat> so no discussion. Okay. Matt, any uh, any other thoughts or comments on the emergency response? New information. You and I had talked previously and we didn't have any knowledge of any issues with emergency responders or emergency response. Yeah, we certainly, when we go through it, these types of processes, we reach out to <coughs> the emergency response, in this case, E911. We also reached out to CECOM. Mm -hmm. uh, I think anything with road names themselves, changing road names, we did hear from CECOM, there is another Bear Drive and in Richland, and that's why we kind of went to the Bear Road. They thought, so there's always going to be these conflicts, and certainly moving forward as we people come in for road names with new subdivisions and new development, we try to make sure that we don't have names that sound alike and we're staying away from the same name but place and drive. And, so, but we didn't get anything from them. Certainly, that's part of our conversation with them. And those issues, but it doesn't mean they didn't have it. Just like with the post office, I reached out to the postal service, and that's not really data they keep. That's like you, I received my neighbor. Uh, yeah. Do that. I only got eight people along the access road, and that same thing. Yeah. So we're not doubting you. I'm not sure the post office is the best source <laughs> yeah. on this delivered mail. Or the Fair City Hero. Because we all know the answer to yeah. that question. It may not be owning up to that one. Yeah. So, yeah. So. I think the only way I could support a name change in this would be something just completely different, not a family name, but, you know, find a, something that you know, 911 doesn't have on their roster or. Well, I think you, you touched on an important point, which is clearly the Bear family would, uh, as early uh, uh, residents out there and original owners of the land, uh, I think have a, an understandable desire to, to have a family name attached to it. So that's one issue you can set that to the side for a minute. Then there's the emergency response, which is a second issue. And then there's the mail issue. I'm, I'm willing to pretty much discard the mail issue because frankly, that happens everywhere. Uh, it's unfortunate, but it just does. So really, we're talking about emergency response. We're talking mm -hmm. about family heritage. Uh, Commissioner Cook, I, I uh, don't want to overstep my bounds, but I think I'm hearing between the lines in your comments that there are other families that have long histories out there as well that would prefer to have their names on the road. And since you can't name it for all the different families, perhaps you should name it for any of them. Right. And then. Um, then that brings us back to the, uh, the emergency response issue. And, uh, I'm curious, would would your family be inclined to, <clears throat> excuse me, want to change the name? <clears throat> excuse me, if if uh, the board thought that the name change was, was acceptable, but that we needed something that wasn't one of the families out there because of the conflict between various landowners and, and their wishes? Yeah, this is. <laughs> And, and you're not required to respond. I'm just posing that no, as a I, question. I, he was the original. That's why he had the choice to name it. That right. was the way it was. Right. That was came later. Um, and it is also for legacy. 
um, Jason purposes too. I mean, there are so many farmer names out there. I'm amazed you didn't do it in the first place. Yeah. Um, especially but, around us. And, and I understand completely. I just wanted to offer you an opportunity to share that. I was quite sure that that was you part of the field. That was in the letter also. It was. And then the bear name in Richmond, that's Richmond. That's not Castle. And was it the same name? That's what I'm curious to spell the same. No, it's spelled differently, but now we're part of the uh, joint dispatch with CECOM. And, oh, and so yes. now it's a, it's a multi county, multi city. Dispatch center, so we're having to also look at any issues that would occur. Although the county has the authority to name roads, whatever we want to name them, regardless of what CECOM says, I still think that it's important to ensure that since that's providing all of our dispatch services for all emergency services, that we try to make sure that uh, we're not being consistent. But there's a spelt bear, the traditional yeah. grizzly bear way. Yes. Right, and we have bear drive. If you want to change the bear road, that's fine too. Any, anyway. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Miller, what are what are your thoughts? Um, Commissioner Cook sounds like he's he's not prepared to move forward. What do you think? I respect family heritage and, and the first person out there in naming it that name. I, I respect that. I don't think there's a lot of bears out there, rear roads, so I don't see that being a problem. What I do, what I do, and I think safety is important. I think emergency. I, there's a lot of times in my life, three or four or five times that I that second or two made a made a difference that I know of, and um, so that's important to me. What I'm concerned about is a big complaint was about the cost, the cost of changing everything. Anymore, it seems like this technical age, a lot of headers and stuff are done on your computers. I wonder what the real cost would be to change things over, because that seems to be the complaint. And I don't think it's like it was, you know, 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Yeah, where you had check for some passports. And passports? No. Yeah, I guess you could have a number of um, things that driver's license. And, and that would be for the person that's living there. That would be the person that's living there, that issue, the driver's license, not the right. person that just farms there. So we're talking about uh, very few people. Uh, what I would like to see, and it was, a, it was a list of everybody agreeing with you on this and bringing it to us, making it simple, but that's not the case. Um, I tend to think the importance of changing the name for safety is is, important, is good. I think that's the number one issue. I think that's what we should do. Um, whether we go back to the Bear family name, I think it's suiting because of uh, the first person out there. I do think that. Um, so I, I think I'm going to have to go along with that. Um, just want to be clear, I understand. When you say I need to go uh, along with what they're asking, which is change the name to Bear Road. Okay, so you support changing Bear Road? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine with it. All right. Well, that's the fun part of being the chair. If the other two don't agree, then you're the person that, that makes the call. Um, and I just want to be sure, Commissioner Cook, you're still inclined yeah, I mean, not to change it. No. Okay. All right. Well, um, well, you know, as I said, though, it, yeah, as far as safety-wise, we could look at a, a name, but not a family name. Uh, okay. <clears throat> So, like Commissioner Miller, um, I have tremendous respect for the, for the uh, original developers out in the blocks and the people who came there and settled that ground. Um, I think that the compelling issue, let me take these one at a time, with respect to changing to a family name, if there were not opposition from other families that reside out there, it would be an easy call. I'd say, sure, why not? Um, but I have to weigh that op opposition on that issue and then I have to look at the emergency response piece and I think that's the overwhelming concern or ought to be our first priority in the whole discussion and if anybody feels that, that there is um, an issue with, with emergency response then the name change is appropriate and um, you know I just got to say I think that brings me to where Commissioner Cook is which is a name change is uh, is not really the issue as to whether or not there's a name change that uh, the folks who live on that road are all willing to support. So I guess my uh, my inclination here is to try and get as many people as we can on the same page 
and I'm thinking that uh, perhaps uh, before we close the door completely that it might be worth having the families talk out there and see if, if there's an opportunity for the people who live out there to come to agreement that Bear Road is, uh, is acceptable to everybody or certainly to a majority. How you work that out among yourselves really isn't our concern or our business, but, but rather than, than just shut the door on it, um, I would be open to uh, providing an opportunity, some time for folks who live on that road to talk and, and maybe there's a way that uh, people can, can agree that maybe Bear Road is, is acceptable. We did get some feedback from citizens. It was it was fairly strong that they were opposed to it. And I and I don't know any of the history. I don't know if it's business, if it's personal, if it's cost, and really none of that. So much as you know, my concern is public health and safety, uh, making sure 911 can get there. But uh, I like the idea of original landowners and having road names. I think that's part of what gives Franklin County its character. And, it, and, there's a reason we have an Ag Hall of Fame that's to respect and remember those people that, that made the county what it is today. But I've also got to weigh the interests of other people who have land on that road as well. So my preference would be, first and foremost, to offer an opportunity, uh, just go ahead and set this aside, <clears throat> table it, and allow an opportunity to see if folks that live out there can, can work something out. Um, and alternatively, I, I think I have to uh, weigh in the interests of all citizens. I think I have to say Commissioner Cook has the right answer. So I, I'm happy to offer an opportunity if, if you want to let us know if that's something you'd like to pursue or if you want us to just go ahead and, and close it out. I was going to tell you that. I'm sure a lot of people that are right. Could I ask you to use the mic, please? Because yes. it is a public meeting. Yes. <laughs> people have a right to know what you said. I have a feeling that a lot of people that wrote those letters are not even involved with the landowners. They're just renters. Um, but I, I don't. Yeah, I, I mean, know. I, do know I, I think I some of them are landowners. Oh, yeah. There's two more that are landowners. But, but one, and then there's two others. That what do you think about the idea of maybe trying to meet with them and see if you could get support from your neighbors to do this? Because I'm not opposed to naming it if Vera Road, if, if we right. don't have opposition from others who share well, that road. Will, but they don't have anything to do with the land. They just work for the farmers and. So I don't see where they have so much say. Well, I'd be landowners. interested so, in the landowners. Oh, just the landowners. Yes. Just the landowners. Well, there are going to be two others, so we can speak to them. I, I'd be interested yeah. in hearing from the landowners. Yeah. Um, you know, being a tenant on a on a property is a fine thing, and I don't mean to disparage that, but right. that doesn't convey the same rights as land ownership. Right. Exactly. And you know that I don't know of any other farmers that are asking for this either. Okay. I don't think not everyone and, out there, most of them are dead by now. <laughs> and, and to be clear, I'm, that's, this is something that, that I'm suggesting the board may want to consider, but we can't do this unless at least the majority of the board says yes, we're going to go down this road. So I need to take a minute and just check with Commissioner Cook and Commissioner Miller. Uh, are either of you uh, supportive of the idea of allowing some time to see if the neighborhood can, okay. can agree to, to a name? Oh, yeah, we don't want to close the door. Just, uh, so how are you proposing we do this? So what we would do is we would we would table the matter, which means we set it aside. It's not, we aren't making a formal decision. We aren't approving or denying. We're just suspending it, essentially. And uh, we'd ask you to come back, you know, in the next 30 days or so. It doesn't have to be exact. Okay. But just to give you time to reach out to your neighbors, to the, to the other landowners, and... Um, and see if it's possible for the neighborhood to, to find you know, agreement and consensus that we can name it Bear Road. How, however you do that, whatever concessions are made, whatever agreements are made, really isn't for us. Our interest is that, that the landowners out there uh, agree, and then, then our job becomes much simpler. Okay. But I think if, if we were to have to make a decision today, I, I do think I'd have to uh, go with uh, Commissioner Cook's logic, which is that um, we need, we need equity as much as we respect the, the family and the early development. Um, 
you know, if, if, it, if we need a road name change for emergency response, we need to find something that the majority of the landowners out there are going to be comfortable with. Um, but more than happy to, to leave the door open and provide some time to see if, if folks can get together and, and agree that Bear Road is a good name. Okay, I also want to reiterate that we are willing to pay for this. So if that makes a difference also. Well, I'm, I'm, thank you. I'm not real concerned about the county's cost component. I'm, I'm really concerned about if there are impacts on other families and landowners, if, if you all come to terms on them being comfortable with that or not. It's really, we had a similar thing within the last month or two <clears throat> with the a road easement, and there were some other property owners involved, and we tabled that to provide those landowners time to get together and see if they could come to a, an agreeable solution for everybody. So it, it very much is in my preference when we can get Franklin County folks together around the table and, and find something that everybody is, is comfortable with. Um, can I ask at all who wrote the letters? They're public record, and you can actually get copies of them if you just ask that gentleman over there. Oh, great. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay, so uh, unless I hear otherwise, I would say we table this for, uh, uh, let's see, this is Thursday the 21st. So we just table it until uh, September 30th, unless we hear sooner. And after September 30th, if we hadn't, haven't heard anything, then we, we close it out and uh, move on. Is that agreeable there, buddy? So where is his name change at today, Craig? Currently the road is, is, at, is still Ridgeview. And there is no resolutions to change it? Or no, we, we rescinded that we last week. Yeah. So, so we're back to where we're back to where we were when we started. Well, there is no tabling of anything. It's just... So the tabling is the request yes. for a name change, which is still pending. Mm -hmm. No? If you okay. call it that, I don't know how you could when it's been rescinded. And we changed it once, and then that, that resolution was rescinded. So we're... Yeah, so but it's a closed book at this point. Yeah. So what has happened? I'm sorry, Karen. Did you have something to add? This is a new, a new, um, a new agenda summary report. report. So the yeah. old resolution is and this <coughs> is finished. This is a new. Process. Okay. This is a new request, um, which would require a motion to bring this resolution forward. Right. right. This, 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 this is a pending request that the board is. Uh, considering tabling until September 30th, and if, if there's no uh, additional action before September 30th on the information, then, then uh, on that date, then it, it's uh, considered uh, denied and we close the books on the request. Everybody comfortable with that? Yeah. Okay. Then We'll table that till September 30th, and uh, we'll move on to our next item of business, which is public comment. I'm open the public wishing to comment. Okay, not seeing anybody we move on to office business. Chairman, we have two uh, vouchers in front of us. One's uh, versus fund expenditures <coughs> for approval of uh, 16. Items in the fund expenditures, uh, Otter, O&M, um, GL Commissary, Solid Waste, uh, etc. Bottom line of those items is $650,659.84. And Keith has uh, approved them, and Mr. Beaton and Rosa have uh, ordered them. Okay, I will second the motion. The motion is second for approval of fund expenditures is presented. You now have what, $650,659.84? Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Second and final, salary clearing and emergency management payroll. Bottom line of those two items is $718,038.86. And Mr. Beaton and... Uh, Oh, signed off. Yeah, we'll second this motion. Okay. Motion is second for approval of salary carrying emergency management payroll as read. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Aye, those are approved as well. 
Next item is uh, consent agenda. Is there any item on the consent agenda that any commissioner wishes to pull for separate discussion and consideration? I have nothing. Another anything else for yeah. separate consideration? Look in there, don't sit. Go back there, make sure I get them all. Hold on there. Um, no, that, I'm fine, and I move to approve the consent agenda one through seven. I second. Okay, there's a motion and second for approval of the consent agenda as presented. Seven items. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Consent agenda is approved. Okay, next item is administration office of business. Yeah. Um, first item that I wanted to discuss very briefly, I'm not quite sure this is right for a full discussion. Uh, AT&T, who owns one of the cell towers out at uh, the RV Park uh, facility, has uh, requested a uh, reduction in their uh, rental uh, costs, their, their lease terms, an adjustment in their lease terms. They're indicating to us that they believe a, that the market uh, has changed for leasing space. And uh, I, I wanted the, the board to be aware that I'm having those discussions with their consultant. Uh, we're trying to make a better, more fair determination of what the market really is. Uh, it's not a substantial decrease. It would be about $100 a month. They're currently paying uh, $1,458 per month. And they have a proposal uh, for the next five years that'd be reduced to thirteen hundred and fifty-five uh, dollars. Um, you'll recall that uh, last, I think it was last year, maybe year, year before, we made some modifications to the other uh, cell phone tower owner, Verizon, uh, taking advantage of additional technology that they were placing on, the, uh, or were intending to place on their tower. Their uh, annual bill is about uh, twenty-three thousand, so it's it's a little higher than the, the AT&T tower. Um, the, the question I really kind of have before the board is: Are you interested in pursuing a, a discussion of their uh, proposed changes? And if so, uh, they're looking at either wanting a seven-year guarantee or a ten-year guarantee, and there's some different numbers depending on which we. Choose. I'm just kind of looking for a, a flavor or a leaning of the board at this point. Uh, obviously, I need to have more discussion with, with AT&T about some of the details. Uh, I put this on the agenda knowing that we we're having this discussion, but uh, know that we haven't fully uh, vetted a, a proposal or a solution uh, back and forth. But I kind of just like a little bit of guidance of general thinking about the, those leases and what... Uh, what you'd like me to do. So they're basically equal to AT&T and Verizon are the same Pretty power. Comparable. Verizon's paying almost twice more than... Well, not twice. They're paying about... Uh, about 58% more. Yeah. That's going to say $2,000 a month compared to 1300 No, it's 23000 a year. Right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Break that down to 12 months. Right. right. <coughs> we have a good so what is the term of this contract? How long? So, uh, right now, it's it's got several renewal periods in it. The okay. next so renewal period so expires about a year from now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What was the next renewal? Uh, September, I believe, of next year. That's for AT and T. Yes. September of nineteen. Okay. And so they're trying to renegotiate now, and they want to add uh, how many years on the contract? Um, so potentially up to 30. I mean, they're coming five year increments. Okay, five to 30 years. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Verizon's at 23K a year. Yeah, I believe so. And, and ATT's at about 18. So. Uh, AT&T is currently at fourteen fifty eight. They want to drop that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so AT&T is at seventeen four ninety six, and Verizon's at uh, two ninety six. Looks like uh, 
Verizon is, uh, is paying about uh, 470 bucks a month more. Mm -hmm. And AT&T wants to drop theirs on. Right. Correct. Okay. Um, I'll just get it out and get mine done. But I'm not, uh, I'm not a fan of extending these on really long lease agreements unless there's an escalation clause that goes with the market. Um, that's point one, point two. Uh, I'm not interested in dropping at 100 bucks a month now or any time. The, the market for these is not going down, it's going up. That's why we continue to get requests from people around the country wanting to buy these contracts. Because there's money in there. Um, and $100 a month on this lease is, is utterly irrelevant to uh, AT&T's financial mm -hmm. line. So um, I, I'm fully confident that there's plenty of market interest to come in and buy this contract if AT&T decides they want to go somewhere else. So I'm not inclined to drop the price and I'm not inclined to do a long-term contract with them. As I said earlier, what would I do if it was my money? That's exactly what I would do. hope that's clear. Yep. Yes. How long is Verizon lease? Because AT&T is already less than Verizon. Uh, yeah. The Verizon lease, I believe, also was a 30-year that they, they can renew five every, every five years to they can uh, renew. Them. Yeah. And so next year, they're going to be able to renew ATTR, and they're yeah, probably and going to want to drop Didn't we get a signing bonus with that? Commissioner Peck mentioned a escalation clause. There is a 7% uh, escalation after five years. On the AT&T. On the AT&T. On the AT&T. Yeah. Well, to, to give a definitive answer, <coughs> you have to see all the terms of the deal right. and just give them to you conceptually. Right. Um, but the, uh, these contracts all have uh, termination clauses. Mm. As you know, we watch those clauses pretty carefully. So uh, they may be 30 year contracts, but that doesn't mean they can be there for 30 years. It's you know, in five years we can renegotiate by mutual agreement, we can extend it. Correct. So really, it's a five-year contract with a whole bunch of options to renew by mutual agreement. I think that's a lot different than a third-year contract. Yes, sir. Just to be clear. Yes. So that, that's my take. Does anybody want to offer a, a different view for consideration and discussion? No, if there's no problem that we lose a market because we're not agreeing with it, then if there's no problem there, then I'm fine. Yeah, that's, just keeping it. that's just my opinion. I'm, I'm and then do you know more of that? I don't. Uh, there's probably some competing information, but I tend to share Commissioner Peck's view that space for cell towers is becoming uh, more desirable than rather than less. Exactly. I, I, I've seen no reason to drop it. Okay. I agree. So then if, if you have a specific proposal or something that you want the board to consider, you'll back that up and yeah. bring it to us. But I think you you got a sense of where the board is at, and yeah. that should help with your negotiation. Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. Any Thank other you. business? Um, I'm going to ask for a uh, executive session. Uh, it has the potential of asking for uh, action following that executive session. Okay. Uh, but I don't think I have anything else for... I have a couple of uh, administrative items that I'd like to touch on before we do that. But before I do that, is there any board members have any other administrative business you want to bring up over the last... Yeah, I have nothing. I'll be at... Uh Washington EDA conference for the next couple of days in Prosser. Okay. No, I have nothing to speak on now. Okay. I have two items. One is, <clears throat> excuse me, we've been working on uh, uh, rebuilding our, our veterans assistance program and giving you a kind of a weekly update on that. Just want to let you know that uh, we have a, uh, a meeting for the Veterans Advisory Board scheduled for next week. I believe the member serves us on the 29th. The purpose of that meeting is to get the individuals, the five individuals that the board appointed last week, uh, together to uh, have a discussion about uh, the goals and the mission of that advisory board, which, of course, we all know is to advise this board of commissioners on our policies. 
and to uh, help uh, put the final touches on the pending policy, uh, county policy on the Veterans Assistance Program. And so uh, I will be, uh, unless there's objection, somebody else really wants to do it, uh, uh, I'll be meeting with them and uh, kind of guide that effort and we'll keep you posted uh, as we go through it. And then the other, other item is, uh, as I mentioned last week, there is a vacant seat on the Franklin County Planning Commission. It's one that is attached to District 1, which is my commissioner district. As you recall, I mentioned that uh, it doesn't have to be by statute somebody from an unincorporated area or even within the UGA. But I do think because it's Franklin County, not City of Pasco, that ideally we look for someone who is in the urban growth area and lives in an unincorporated area. Uh, we've received an application from uh, Roger Lank, who we all know. Roger meets all those criteria. This in District 1, he's in the UGA, and he's in an unincorporated area. Uh, and uh, because he's nominally uh, coming out of my district, I was asking the board's uh, consent that uh, we put his name on the consent agenda for formal approval next week. Um, and that would make him a formal member prior to their next planning commission meeting toward the end of the month. Any objection? None from me. Mr. Miller? No. Okay, so Keith, uh, if you see about maybe him that. Um, you and Keith, if you would, have a chat with Nicole. Uh, the board is going to put Mr. Wright's nomination on the consent agenda for next week for the planning commission. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, that's all the business that, uh, that I had. Keith, you're looking for an executive session. You anticipate that we may need board action after that. Could you tell us what RCW and what purpose and for how long? Please? Yes. I would request a uh, executive session under RCW 42.30.110, paragraph 1, subparagraph D, review negotiations on performance of publicly bid contracts, up to uh, 20 minutes with the uh, possibility of coming out earlier, I would ask that uh, Teresa from the prosecutor's office, the sheriff, and uh, Matt and Craig, do you want to stay for this? I, I don't know what Craig needs to stay for this. But Matt Mahoney from Public Works. <laughs> okay, so is uh, 10.07. Public comment. Yeah, yeah, we get one more comment. We'll do it after. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so we'll do executive session for. I'm sorry, Keith. You said how long? Up to 20 minutes. Okay, up to 20 minutes. That's RCW 4231 D, and it looks like all the people we need are here. Our sheriff is here. Good morning, public court secretary Jen from uh, the prosecutor's office. And as soon as we get the door closed, we'll start our executive session. We'll call it. Uh, we'll call it ten on nine as the start time. Okay, door is closed. Let's go ahead and turn off the lights. Okay, it's ten twenty-nine. We've exhausted our time as scheduled for the twenty minutes of executive session. We need additional time. Uh, does everybody think an additional 20 minutes would be enough? Okay, so we'll extend for 20 minutes, which should take us to approximately 10.50. And go ahead and close the door again, please. Okay, it is 10.50. We're back in open session. We've completed our executive session. There does not appear to be a need for any additional time. Um, we missed a public comment uh, earlier. And since there's nobody from the public here to comment, I'm going to skip it now. We've already had our executive session. Are there any other executive sessions required? Is there any other business from the commissioners? Just note for the board. Any other business from the yeah, board? I apologize. I'm going yeah. to be out of the office Thursday and Friday of this week. Just okay. Vacation. All right. Last call for comments? Please Thanks.